Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Jenny Montgomery. Welcome to another half hour of information to help you make the most of your time, make informed decisions, and keep up with goings on in the greater Augusta area. So, who's ready for a summer read? The fabulous Karen White will join me shortly to talk about her newly released book, Dreams of Falling. But first, June is wedding month. We are going to be checking in this half hour with makeup artist and stylist Xavier Cisco Ross as she creates a beautiful bridal look here on her model Lilo. So think about it, everybody. You have spent, and I know you're going to agree with me on this, you've spent big bucks on your wedding gown and the perfect accessories. So you want to be sure and book an appointment with a professional uh, before you do your photo shoot. And of course, for the big day, not only will you look great, but your stress level will be so reduced because somebody else, Xavier <laughs> in this case, is dealing with all those details. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so well, tell me a little bit about how we're going to start. What are you going to do first with Lilo? Most brides want to glow on their wedding day. So I'm going to use a little glow primer as uh -huh. the base and then add a little primer to set that on top of it. Okay, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the next step is? We'll go ahead and work with her eyes first. Okay. Uh-huh, to so okay. give it some drama, we're going to go and do a cut crease on her today, which is really popular in the bridal industry. Oh, okay, a cut Something crease. Something fun, mm-hmm, and it's going to bring her eyes out, make it pop, and let her look just glow today. Okay. Yes. Great. I do want our viewers to know that um, Xavier is the owner of uh, Xavier Beauty Boutique, which is a mobile beauty boutique. And uh, we're just so glad she's here with us again today. So now I'm going to make my way over to the couch. And let me tell you how excited I am to have best-selling New York Times author Karen White back on the show. Karen's new book, Dreams of Falling, was just released last week. Her other novels include The Night the Lights Went Out, The House on Trad Street, which is part of that Trad Street series, Flight Patterns and The Memory of Water, also The Sounds of Glass, and the guests on South Battery, and so many more. Great to have you back on the show with us, Karen. I'm thrilled to be here, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you. And we were just talking about it. This Dreams of Falling is your 24th. Correct. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? So one of the things, before we talk about this book, where, where does the creativity, where do the characters come from? You know, they, they, they talk to me in my head, and I, I was joking last night, I, I had another signing, and um, somebody asked me something similar. I'm like, well, my characters are really real, and they're always talking to me in my head. And when I'm writing, and I have to leave to go do something, I picture all my characters sitting around the dining room table just like waiting for me to come back to tell them what to do. My characters just, they exist, <laughs> you know, yeah. they, they're real people to me. And um, um, whether I've written them in a book yet or not, they're waiting, waiting for me to put them on a page. You have been writing since you were a little girl. Karen, Karen grew up in London, is that right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, writing was something you loved to do? You know what? Writing was not something I loved to do, but I loved to read. I've loved Reading books. Reading was what you loved. Okay. I've loved books and storytelling my whole life. I've been obsessed. I was the child who always had her nose in a book um, that would have to leave the dining room table when given the ultimatum, you know, do you <laughs> put the book down or leave the table. And, yeah. um, and I would leave the table because I couldn't put the book down. So, um, and writing was something I just kind of fell into because I didn't know I liked to do it until I learned how to type. How old were you then? 10th grade. 10th grade. Right. So once you could type, then you began to, to realize this is we, something Because that I before, do. I loved creating stories, but when I would handwrite them, because back in the dark ages before, you know, computers. Um, right. You know, you'd have to handwrite stuff and I would be like, oh great, I, you know, I have this great story idea and I'd start writing and my idea would be on chapter three and I'd still be trying to write that first paragraph and I just found writing frustrating because of that because I would forget what some of those things were and then when I learned how to type because I played piano all my life, right. my hand-eye coordination was really good so within Two weeks of, and this was manual typewriters with the, yeah. <laughs> you know, with the return, right? And the whiteout and all. Um, I was doing like 88 words a minute without, you know, and that was on a manual typewriter. So all of a sudden it made sense why I didn't like to write. And then I could, you know. I love that. That's yeah. fa that is fascinating. That little bit of technology, which seems ancient now. I know, now. really. My but kids that laugh. that made such a big difference for you. Huge, yeah. Well, I love how you said the, the liquid paper because... <laughs> You know, college papers were that way for me. Yes. I had a roommate one time that had the brother two with the cartridge. Me too. I oh. got that when I was in college. Yeah. That was like that a Christmas everything. gift. <laughs> the correction cartridge. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're dating oh, ourselves. We are, we are dating ourselves. <laughs> well, um, Karen, your books are, so many of them are set along the coast. Mm -hmm. And you, you call yourself a grit. Uh, yes, you girl are. raised in the South, yep. even though I was not. <laughs> okay. But at heart. At heart. Because my parents are both from Mississippi, and I was raised with Southern um, relatives and crazy Southern right. family who I adore. And, um, and so you're my wearing roots, a starfish. And so. I'm wearing it, yes. And this is from a New Orleans jeweler. So it, it's all about the South for me. And um, uh, the call to the low country is just something that I experienced uh, later on in life. I smelled the pluff mud for the first time, and I was gone. The pluff mud. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I love how your books are so detailed with things like that. This book uh, you will love because there is an Augusta reference several times, and, and that's a lot of fun. And all of us who live in Augusta realize <laughs> that Augusta is on the evacuation route. Yes, exactly. So, so a lot of times, if you are at the beach or something and you're not quite sure what road to take, you can just follow evacuation. Yes, there you go. The evacuation to route Augusta, you yeah, to Augusta. Yeah. Um, but the characters really experience in this, what they go through, is different kinds of love. Mm -hmm. and, and understanding that the way people show love and experience love is different. Right. And I really love that element of the story. Right. And, and, and I love that too because we all make mistakes. You know, it's, I love my children. Have I made mistakes? Absolutely. But everything I've always done has always been out of love. And these characters, you know, the different ways people love does not negate one of the other ways. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, as long as you approach it with a full heart. And that's so we have here, you know, the, a love for, you know, a mother has for her child or a grandmother has for her granddaughter. Um, and the love between friends, uh, they're just closest sisters. I think all of those, you know, that's, that's what makes the world go round, you know. And, and of course, we have uh, romantic love as well in, in several cases. And brothers, you know, two brothers, you know, the love of one brother for another and Absolutely. what the sacrifices that one makes for the other. Um, and I love to explore that, you know, how, um, you know, we live with our choices and you choose to love and then you make sacrifices for that love. And that's just kind of what these characters experience and all their gut-wrenching emotions of it. Tears. There are tears when you read this. There, there, just, there, are, there really are. It, it is a very, very, very great great story and one that'll Thank stick you. with us for a long time. Thank you. Um, so I was very excited, Karen, to see Karen White in the Costco magazine. I know. And and to buy one of your books at Costco. Yay. That must have been it, thrilling. It was, I mean, um, when I heard, and it was for the book that came out last year when the trade paperback came out in, in August, um, uh, Costco made it their book club pick of April. So I, I knew I had made it. Like everybody said, well, when did you know that you were like a real writer, you know, I'm a, and seriously, it wasn't until I appeared in the Costco magazine. The Costco. <laughs> and it's funny because I love Costco. And, I do too. And there's right. a big scene in, in the book at Costco, and <laughs> it's like women fighting over the Christmas trees, you know, that come in, and, which I was the one once upon a time. Um, don't tell anyone. Oops. <laughs> uh, but, um, uh, yeah, that was, that was my claim to fame now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get that framed in my office because it, it was pretty That's, awesome. That was a really big deal, mm -hmm. I was, and I was very, very proud for you when I saw Thank that. Thank you. Because Thank that, you. Is, that is huge. Um, you're on the book tour right now for mm -hmm. this new book, mm -hmm. and um, you have other, other things in, in your head. I do, um, and actually I have another book coming out in September, The Glass Ocean. It's another collaboration that I did with two of my um, dearest, dearest writer friends. We did another one a few years ago. And it was did really well and people have been saying you've got to do another so and we're already started working on the third um, but that's really just a, a publisher sponsored girls trip it's it's yeah <laughs> so what we do really do? Like a lot of each write little bits and we email do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we meet together usually a place that has a spa um, in the beginning I gonna, so <laughs> I was thinking usually at a place that has a bar <laughs> yeah, and, well that too okay because that's when we first came up with the idea of writing together it was in a bar and that book was going to be set in Scotland it was going to be called Fifty Shades of Plaid but that that changed <laughs> so they're now actually legitimate great books that it's nothing to do with plaid and they're not set in Scotland um, and actually The Glass Ocean is set on Lusitania in 1915 so we do a lot of history diving a lot of research mm -hmm. in your books Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then next year I have the sixth book in the Trad Street uh, series coming out. Um, just turned that in a couple of weeks ago, so it's time to get started on the next one. Fantastic. Well, I know that your readers are going to be thrilled for that, Karen. Thank you. And I thank you for your time today. Thank you. And good luck on the rest of this tour, and uh, we'll look forward to your next book in Wonderful. September. Thanks so much, Jenny. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. 
still ahead on Jenny. 